Been wanting to do this project for a long time. Um, I got this china cabinet from a estate sale probably a few months ago. I went in and bought a bunch of furniture from them and uh, went to pick it up the next day and nobody had purchased it. And they were like, you can go ahead and have it if you can take it. It's a two piece china cabinet. I don't know what the deal is with the backing, um, but I'm gonna paint over that. The bottom's kind of interesting. It's not drawers, but doors. We got storage. This does not open, but there's storage back there. And then this one has a drawer. It's dovetail. I've got a blue color that's just been sitting around and I'm gonna paint it that color and just go with it and see what happens. This is the color here. It's um, some sort of Valspar leftover can that I had. I have no idea why I have a whole gallon of it. I'm gonna just start with that blue and see where it goes. I'll probably glaze it because of all the detail that's down at the bottom. I was thinking about doing the inside white, but I'm just not sure if that's if I wanna tackle that or, or not, we'll just see. The first thing I'm gonna do is take the doors off of the base and the top and to get everything clean and get ready to be prepped, sand it with some 220 grit sandpaper and um, probably not gonna prime it uh, unless I find bleeds and then I'll be able to paint it. So hopefully this will be a pretty quick project. Since this has hinges, the first thing I like to do is mark them so that they get put back in the same place. This is gonna be top. Right, middle right, and this is bottom right. Top left, middle left, bottom left. And then we have left and right. Let's put this somewhere safe, nowhere around here. Here is all the hardware for the top. Okay. Instead of trying to prep all this with the backing in there, I'm just gonna take it off. I can just take a hammer, loosen it up. There's staples back there, so. Just loosen it up. After I got the back off, I used a sander with 120 grit sandpaper just to degloss the backing in preparation for paint. After I got it sanded, I took a rag and wiped all the dust off. That way there wouldn't be anything there whenever I painted it. I decided to paint this backing with my new Wagner Flexio 5000 that Wagner sent me. This is my first time using this sprayer and I felt like it'd be a good time to test it out since it was a nice flat surface. Overall, I'm pretty happy with the sprayer so far. While I was working on this project, my son was in town and he decided that he wanted to help me prep this project a little bit. I managed to not record any of the prep other than my son sanding this piece here, but if y'all watch my videos in the past, you know I'm a stickler for prep. I wipe everything down with trisodium phosphate, make sure that I get all the dirt and grime off of there, and then come back with either 120 or 220 grit sandpaper and make sure that everything's sanded twice so that the paint has something to adhere to. <laughs> After everything is clean and sanded, I'll take a rag and wipe everything off to get all the dust off before I paint it. I'm using my Graco Magnum to apply the blue paint on the rest of the piece. I like this sprayer because I'm able to get into tight spots and everything. If you look at this clip, it only takes me about a minute and a half to spray the first coat of paint.
you can see here that with just one coat I've got pretty good coverage I'll actually come back and do it one more time most pieces I'll spray about two or three coats One thing I really like about sprayers is how smooth the paint goes on. You can see all the detail and everything. There's no brush strokes. If you look closely, you can see the wood grain in this door. Uh, that makes everything look great whenever you're going to glaze it. The wood grain kind of gets exposed. So I ended up deciding to go ahead and paint the inside white on this piece. I thought it would give it some more depth. Of course it took a lot more time because I had to paint it by hand. I taped off all the edges around the blue so that it wouldn't get messed up too much. At this point I'd already painted one coat and this is the second coat. I kind of made the mistake of trying to paint it without tape on. You'll see that a little bit later. Doing two tone on a project takes a lot more time but you'll see at the end it's well worth it. Instead of trying to break my back trying to paint the top side of this I just flipped it over to make it easier to paint the top. I've got to remove this tape that I put on here like two days ago, hoping it doesn't peel. Pretty sure it won't. So I just put this on here to prevent little things like this. Whenever I did the first coat, a little bit of white got on there and at first, I thought it wasn't going to be a big deal, but I figured I'd be better off taping it off. For the glazing, I'm going to be using wood stain. I don't always use gloves, but I wanted to try these out because they're, they're cool and black. These are a little bit more expensive than the ones that I, I normally get. Usually I just get whatever. These are like $10 for 50, but they're real thick. A lot of times the problem I have with gloves whenever I'm glazing is that they rip. I'm going to try these out. Now yeah, these look pretty cool. Look, matches my tattoo. I'm all color coordinated. Ooh. Whenever I use wood stain, I just use these chip brushes. They're about $1.50 or so. I pretty much consider them disposable because they're so cheap. And to be honest, I'll use one and um, it'll dry out a little bit. And then the next time I use it, I can just kind of re-wet it. Oil-based products usually will re-wet themselves. I have a lot of people that ask me what the process is for glazing with wood stain. The most common question is how long do you leave it on? And 
the answer is I wipe it off right away. I try to work in sections. It's gonna depend also on the, the temperature, uh, what the weather's like outside. I kind of avoided having to do this for the past few days because it's been very hot. That, that just really dries things up. I also need my fans on so that I can get a little bit of air circulation in here and stay cool and that causes the stain to also dry. So I like to work in sections and I usually start with the top because this stuff this stuff drips a lot. It kind of flicks back and forth when you're doing this. You don't want to start with the bottom, wipe it off and then have it looking nice and then start working up top and it uh, drips down. I'm gonna put my phone on my tripod just because glazing is pretty much a two-handed process. And, uh, but I'm gonna wipe it off right now. No waiting, you don't want it to dry. It makes it a lot more difficult to wipe off. Awesome, so I, um, I wiped off the top without pressing record. <laughs> but here's, <laughs> here's the top. Um, I'm gonna have the rest of it match this. You can see how it changed the color a little bit. Just got a little bit of a dirtier tone. Gives it a little bit more character dirty areas sitting in the edges so that's gonna look real cool once we start getting down to this this and this so as I said before I like to work in sections I like to work on the top the sides the insides and then the front as soon as I've applied the stain I'll take a rag and wipe it off immediately glazing takes a lot more time but it gives you the opportunity to highlight details and give your piece a lot more character.
After I'm done glazing, I spray a water-based polyurethane. I pretty much don't wait too long. Sometimes I'll spray it immediately. Sometimes I'll wait 30 minutes. It doesn't really seem to matter too much. What I try to do is spray three or four thin coats and then one thick coat at the end and it gives it a nice shiny finish. Here is the final results. I didn't do a lot of recording on putting the hardware back on. I went ahead with gold hardware, did glazing on the doors. Inside is done. Everything's looking good. On the top, we got some glazing on the inside. So I like the way everything turned out. This was a really long project just because it's such a big piece. Took a lot of time, but um, I got to do something a little bit different, so I'm happy with that. I like the way it turned out. Let me know in the comments what you think about this piece. Be sure to subscribe if you haven't already. Um, like, comment, share, all that good stuff. And I'll see you.